What's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out this Outer Worlds video. In this one, I'm going to be showing what happens if you take the route to get the deserters to come back to Edgewater. I'm also going to be showing how to do that as well. In case you don't know, when you first start up Outer Worlds, you come to this world needing to repair your ship. You're actually in need of a power regulator to get it back up and running. And, well, when you go hunting for a power regulator, you end up going into Edgewater. And then we have to go speak to Reed Thompson, which he's the lead dog at Edgewater. And this is where we actually learn about the deserters. So yeah, let's go ahead and listen into this dialogue that we get when first meeting him. Only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Thompson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator, but I happen to know of another one, and I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant, reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power is shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. The people living in the botanical labs, they're deserters, former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Okay, so as you just heard from that dialogue, we learned where the deserters are located at and who their leader is. So now let's go ahead and head on over to the deserters' location and talk to their leader, Adelaide. If you're hungry, there's meat turning on the spit outside. If you're barren illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? I have been called that, among other things. Green Thumb, Grandmother, the strange old lady who keeps flowers. But yes, Adelaide will do just fine. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? You should try some of my tobacorn tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. A home for anyone who's ever turned their backs on Edgewater. A home for those of us with nowhere left to go and nothing to lose. So like the spores of the puffball, cast on the wind and alighting on fresh soil, we put down new roots. It is an unpleasant story, dear. But the short of it is that sometimes one wakes up and realizes the place that was once her home for much of her life has changed. The home in which we spent our lives has left us behind, and so we must move on. And that is as much as I will say on the subject. Reed Thompson, you here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace, then? Make amends. Spare me. Only thing Reed knows how to make is a mess. Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. He would do such a thing. The question is, why would you agree to his plans? Cannery's got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. 
Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. You've seen that miserable excuse for a town with your own lamps. Hollowed out workers laboring their lives away at the cannery, living off whatever scrap spacer's choice throws them. You know that's true, don't you, Ms. Holcomb? Your father died of overwork. His heart gave out. He, he was tired all the time, sure, but he was old, ma'am, and he raised me all by his lonesome. Look what they did to this child. Lost her family to the company, and still she defends them. I trust you will listen to your conscience. Okay, so from talking to Adelaide, we now get another choice to either take the power from Edgewater, or we can still take the power from the deserters. And well, in this episode, I'm going to be doing just that. I'm going to be taking it from the deserters. But I'm also going to show you all a little bit more information over why Adelaide left. Listen into this, guys. Anything else I can do for you? Not under Reed's watch. He and I would come to blows within a day, and he would never tolerate my tending to a garden. This is my home. It will be my home even if Reed cuts our power. Simple as that. If you think Reed does anything in good faith, then you are asking to be lied to. That's because Reed was my boss. I was the cannery's one and only flavor specialist, you see. Remember that limited run of white chocolate saltuna? That was all me. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away, but Reed refused to treat him. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. Said the medicine would have been wasted on him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery, gathered my belongings, and left. That's as much of the story as you need to hear. So using the perception route when talking to Adelaide, we learn that her son passed away, and well, that's the reason why she deserted the place. They didn't treat her son. So before I divert the power, let's go ahead and listen to Reed's side real quick over her story. If I had enough medicine to treat everyone who fell sick, I would, but I don't. I can't save everyone. So I have to choose. Adelaide's son was barely competent. I treat him with our medical rations, and it looks like I'm playing favorites. Now, I will not pretend to understand the suffering Adelaide must have felt on account of losing her child, but she is not the only one to have felt such suffering. I wish she had stayed with us. Adelaide left us when we needed her most. So I'm not going to lie, I've had a bad gut feeling about Reed the entire time almost, and hearing this story made me even think worse about him. But at the same time, when I think about it, what can he really do if medical supplies are scarce? He is right. He can't really play favorites. Although that was a child's life, he decided not to help. It's a pretty sad story and a tough situation to be in. But now let's go ahead and see what happens when we make it so the deserters lose power. Even though I don't really want to do this because I feel like this is the bad choice. I'm being the bad guy doing this. Let's go ahead and see what happens, though. I think you did the rightest thing you could sending the power back to Edgewater. A lot of people would have suffered otherwise. People I care for. Even if they ain't care much for me. Adelaide's okay. What happened? Sprat fell into a transformer again? Food's bound to spoil at this rate. One of us want to go see what happened? I know, I'm trying to think. Hope Adelaide's okay. That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. 
Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil, and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock, so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? You want my flock wasting their lives in that cannery? Fine. Go and talk to them. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. Now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. You offering to cross Reed off, huh? This some sort of twisted reparation for what you've done? Or are you just looking for a chance to sow some chaos? Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. He and I are not sharing the same four walls together. Tell Reed that I can make his people healthy again. I can end their plague. Start a new garden right in the cannery. Three square meals for every man and woman in Edgewater. Tell him how I've made the veil bloom again. The soil has whispered its secrets to me, and I alone know how to breathe life back into the earth. The secret is human corpses. I've been grinding them up in my fertilizer for years. Marauder, worker, don't matter much to me. The human body is rich with nutrients. I have got a means to cure the plague. And I will not share that cure until Reed leaves town. Those are my terms. So obviously, the deserters didn't like that their power shut off, because it made it so all of their hard work is now wasted. However, Adelaide says she will head back to Edgewater and completely turn it around if Reed is out of office. So let's go ahead and head back to Reed and see what he has to say about all of this. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes. But I have done my best for this town. I am a Spacer's choice man. My father was a spacer's choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned up freelancer, but it is my home. I don't believe you. Plague's a reality of life. Best treatment is a good work ethic. You are disparaging our parent company and it is not appreciated. We are a spacer's choice Saltuna cannery. We eat Saltuna here and only Saltuna. I don't understand. You say Adelaide's growing her own food, but that should not be possible. The soil's gone sour. Company said as much. Our own botanists couldn't grow decent crops for us, so the company got rid of them and shut down the greenhouse. You will excuse me for being skeptical. How exactly is Adelaide growing crops in barren soil? And when you say special fertilizer, you mean what exactly? Adelaide has been using dead bodies in her fertilizer? That's... Come to think of it, that's a stroke of brilliance. What a remarkably efficient solution. Recycling Spacer's Choice property long after its date of expiration. I was wondering about those missing bodies in Silas's cemetery. You're right, I am being obstinate. If the best thing I can do for this town is to stand down, then stand down I shall. If Adelaide's found a way to feed her people and cure the plague, then she deserves this office more than I do. I won't stand in her way. My life here is ended. Give me a little time to settle my affairs. 
I'm sure Adelaide will be glad to see the back of me. A couple months ago, I might have put in for a transfer. It's a big colony. Spacer's Choice has other towns. Now, I couldn't show my face in any of them. No such thing as an honorable resignation. Suppose I could find a place outside the walls, or put in for early retirement. I don't know. I could see myself lasting a week. I have always tried to do right by my town. It has never been easy. I do. Adelaide's found a cure for the plague, and she knows how to tend to crop. She's what this town needs. That's insane. I did not expect Reed to abandon his post for Adelaide. It shows how much he actually really does care and hope for the best for this town. I kind of feel guilty over the way I thought about him, honestly. So, since this video is getting pretty long here, I guess I'll go ahead and wrap it up by explaining what happens after this. Basically, we go back to Adelaide and, well, we tell her that Reed is going to leave. She'll kind of be shocked about the news and then she'll tell us that she needs some time to gather her belongings. She'll also give us her watch, which is extremely valuable. As you can see, the sell value on this is 1750 The description for Adelaide's watch reads, an antique that's been in her family for years. She says it should fetch a good price. Not sure if this is for use for anything else but to sell, but yeah, something pretty unique that you get from doing all of this. Also, over time, when you like leave the planet and come back, you will notice that Adelaide will be where Reed was sitting when we first met him. So yeah, it actually happens, he does leave. I'm not exactly sure if you can find him outside of the walls somewhere or not, I have yet to locate him. But here's what Adelaide has to say when you first meet her up here where Reed used to be. Time changes all things. Even Reed's stranglehold over Edgewater must inevitably yield to the attrition of time. Start anew. Edgewater will become the town it was meant to be, a place where we live in harmony with the world, where none of us writhe under the whips of corporate masters. A place where all are welcome, except for Reed's supporters, of course. The garden will bloom anew. I have plans to transform the old cannery into a nursery, with crops enough to feed a town. Saltuna was making the town sick. From now on, if anybody's hungry, they may feast from the bounty of the soil. But of course, and now we have a whole cemetery to ourselves. But yeah, as far as I know, that's all that happens. I'm sure over more time, the place completely changes. There's a garden here and the plague eventually gets cured when she's in office because that is what she said she could do. But yeah, since this video is getting pretty long once again, I just decided I'd wrap it up here. Maybe in another one, I'll show what happens over time with Adelaide in charge of Edgewater. But for now, I thought this would be a great conclusion over what happens if you choose to take the deserters power i guess that's wrapping up this video everyone hope you found this one enjoyable if you did consider taking a little bit of your time and leaving a like and hey if you're new around here maybe consider giving my channel a chance and sticking around and subscribing for more outer worlds content i plan to make tons of content over different situations that you can do in this game so you all know what happens but yeah thanks for taking the time watching and listening until next time remember to stay safe out there peace